Calcific tendinitis is defined as calcification and tendon degeneration at or near the rotator cuff insertion site. Its prevalence is about 3 to 8 percent, of which only 40 percent can be symptomatic. It's more in females between 30 to 50 years of age and can be bilateral in 10 percent of cases. It usually affects the supraspinatus tendon, especially the posterior part, and diabetes is a common association. Its exact etiology is unknown. Calcium deposition is cell-induced and occurs in living tissue. This is an important characteristic pathological feature which differentiates it from dystrophic calcification, in which calcium is deposited in degenerative tissue. The process takes place in three stages. In the precalcific stage, there is fibrocartilaginous metaplasia of tenocytes into chondrocytes. This stage is usually asymptomatic. The calcific stage passes through two phases. In the formative phase, calcium crystals are deposited around chondrocytes, then fused to form larger deposits which appear choke-like with fibrocartilaginous septa in between. This phase can be painful. In the resorptive phase, vascularization occurs and phagocytes start to remove the calcium deposits. This deposit is usually thick and toothpaste-like. This phase is usually very painful. In the final post-calcific phase, remodeling and tendon restitution start to occur with gradual subsidence of pain. Radiologically, the condition can be classified into two types. Type 1, the fluffy, poorly defined periphery. And type 2, the discrete, homogeneous, well-defined deposits. Symptoms can be varying between catching, crepitus, intermittent pain similar to impingement and mechanical block. Examination usually reveals limited painful range of motion and positive impingement signs. The condition has several presentations. It could be asymptomatic in 60% of cases. The patient can present by acute pain, chronic recurrent pain, or chronic persistent constant dull aching pain. Imaging starts by plain radiographs, which play a very important role in the diagnosis and is useful to monitor progression over time and allows assessment of the density, extent, and delineation of the lesion. Views AP in neutral, external, and internal rotation help in identification of the site of calcification as well as the tendons involved. Ultrasound may be useful to quantify the extent of calcification and can be used for guided needle decompression and local injection. MRI is important to assess the rotator cuff integrity, but care should be taken as diagnosis can be missed especially if no plain films are available at the time of initial presentation. Most complications are related to the inflammatory process, whereby adhesions occur subacromial and glenohumeral. Complications include stiff frozen shoulders, progression into complete tears, large deposits can cause impingement, and long head of biceps tendinitis. Conservative management usually succeeds in most cases, it can be in the form of physical therapy to reduce muscle spasm and prevent stiffness with gradual progressive muscle strengthening, and ultrasound is thought to be able to mobilize the calcium crystals. Ultrasound-guided needling, lavage, local anesthetic injection can be introduced. Corticosteroid injections can be considered. Extracorporeal shockwave therapy can sometimes be beneficial. Operative treatment is needed in less than 10% of cases and is indicated in severe progression of symptoms, cases refractory to non-operative treatment in more than six months, interference with activities of daily living. Arthroscopic decompression of calcium deposits is the surgery of choice. Proper arthroscopic decompression should include thorough subacromial bursectomy, Capsular releases according to the preoperative range of motion, proper identification of the diseased part of the tendon, needling, 
longitudinal incision of the tendon to evacuate the deposits which can have a snowstorm appearance or paste-like, dealing with the long head of biceps, tenotomy or tenodesis, and always be ready for repair if tendon integrity is compromised. This video shows the process of identifying the lesion followed by evacuation of the calcific deposits. Needling is done in the suspected area till calcium deposits are extruded. A longitudinal incision is done through the tendon. A curette can be introduced to debride the calcium deposits and milk the tendon to squeeze out the calcific paste. A motorized shaver debrides the frayed degenerated tendon part. It can also be used to squeeze the tendon and deliver the calcific paste. Finally, the rotator cuff repair is added if tendon integrity is questionable. Thank you very much.